As much as I hate to say it, back to school season is very slowly but surely creeping back up on us. And what better way to get ahead of the back to school prep than by optimizing my most used school item, AKA my MacBook. My entire life is on this thing and is how I manage my personal life, YouTube, school, and everything in between. And for something so instrumental to how I function, you would think that it would be this clean, optimized, productive machine of a computer. But no, instead it looks like this. A miracle I was able to get anything done with it, truly. But with a lot of YouTube tutorials, Reddit forums, and passive aggressive Google searches, we have gone from this to this a MacBook that is aesthetic, functional, and perfectly crafted to me. So without further ado, here is my MacBook setup. So let's get things going. I feel like it's been a while since I've been confined to my little circle in the corner, so I'm happy to be back. And let's start things off by talking about my setup and my customizations. So this is my desktop. Much like in my other devices, I prioritize cleanliness and kind of minimalism just because I get easily overwhelmed and I like to minimize distractions wherever I can. For my wallpaper, I found it on Pinterest and it's of these little bunnies driving through a seaside town. I love it, it's so cute. And I think it looks good without being too distracting. And I've linked my Pinterest in the description below where you can see I made a board of some of my favorite desktop wallpapers. So you can go ahead and check that out there. Hopefully it saves you a bit of time because I'm very indecisive. So new to the MacBook Sonoma update is the introduction of widgets. So I just have a couple here in the top left corner. In order to add a new widget, you can go ahead and right click anywhere on the home screen like this, and you can click edit widgets and choose one from the many, many options that you can see over here. Here on the top left, I have my Notion calendar so I can see what day we are in the month as well as all of my upcoming activities for the coming days. I have the weather and temperature and I have a widget for the battery life of my MacBook as well as anything that's connected to it like my headphones or my mouse. And this is not a widget, but it's an application and it allows me to see what song I'm listening to on Spotify, play it, pause it, shuffle it, go back and forth. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that in the app section of the video. And here in the bottom, I have these three little folders that I've customized into these cute little animals, which I also got from Pinterest. And to change a folder from the standard ones to these custom ones, all you're going to do is find a PNG image of whatever you want the folder to look like. We're just gonna take this cat over here, make sure there's no background because that's what makes it really seamless on your desktop. And to make a new folder, we're just going to right click on the desktop, we're going to hit new folder and we can title it whatever we want. We're gonna call this sample. And then we're going to double click this folder and go to get info. And then you're going to see a little folder icon here on the top left and you're going to click that until it's highlighted and then you're just going to paste your image onto that. And this is how you get a custom folder. This one is very small, but you get the idea. And that's what I did over here. So I have these custom folders that are very cute. So although our desktop now looks very clean and organized, let's remember that it didn't used to look this way. I was actually never able to download any of the widgets or any of the new MacBook updates until I started prepping for this video because I had no storage to download the new Mac update. Especially for folks like me that have had their MacBooks for years now, it is so easy to accumulate unnecessary applications, photos and videos that takes up tens and hundreds of gigabytes of your storage and really just a bunch of clutter that slows down your computer. But it doesn't have to be this way. Introducing Clean My Mac X, which happens to be the sponsor of today's video. It's the summertime and both you and your Mac deserve a well-earned vacation. And while you're sipping pina coladas on the beach, why not treat your MacBook to a little bit of self-care as well? Clean My Mac X is one of the best apps to clean and optimize your Mac. It deletes megatons of junk and malware, uninstall unused apps, and makes MacBooks faster, safer, and way more organized. It has something called a menu app, which is a dashboard that monitors and takes care of every aspect of your Mac's performance. If you wanna know about your battery life and how long it'll take for your laptop to charge, if you want to identify which pesky video or file is consuming a little too much memory, or if you're like me and you're playing The Sims and your Max fan is going crazy, you can find out which app is consuming the most CPU and really hope that it's not The Sims. With Clean My Mac X, I was able to free up a bunch of storage, be more aware of what was slowing down my computer, and just feel better knowing that this app can watch over and take care of my Mac so I don't have to. 
Really, your Mac deserves a vacation too. And Clean My Mac X's menu app monitors your Mac's health so you can relax on the beach. Check the description below for a seven day free trial. And thank you again, Clean My Mac X, for sponsoring this part of the video. Now that we talked about customizations, let's continue on with aesthetics, where there are some changes that I like to make in my MacBook settings in order to make things a little bit cleaner and visually appealing. So we're going to go to system settings and we're going to start off with the dock. So here we can go to desktop and dock. I like to make mines pretty small. As you can see, we can change the dock sizes over here. And I like to turn off magnification. Technically, the most optimal location of your dock would be on the left or right of the screen just because you have more horizontal than vertical space, but I really don't find that intuitive at all, so I just keep it in the bottom. I turn on this option for automatically hiding and showing the dock like this just because I don't like to see it unless I need it. And I also like to turn off show suggested and recent apps in dock because I think it just clutters things a little bit more. So I like to keep my dock as small as possible. Also, when you first get your MacBook, you're going to have a lot of different apps that are here on the dock. And I would remove everything that you don't frequently use. And to do that, you can just take whatever app that you want to remove from the dock and just drag it to the trash can. But especially Notion I'm keeping, so we're gonna put her back in there. And while we're here, you also have the option to turn on Stage Manager, which takes all of your recent windows and puts it in a column here on the side. So you have quick access to them like this and you can just switch around and you don't have a bunch of open windows that are cluttering your screen. Next, we can move down to Displays and I like to change the option from the default one, which is this, to this one with more space. And I don't know, it just makes things a little bit smaller and for some reason, I like my display teeny tiny. It's probably not the most optimal. Sometimes I think it's too small, but I think it's quite cute. So I just keep my display into the more space one over here. While I'm here, I also like to go to night shift over here, which makes the color of your display warmer the later that it gets in the day. Like in the morning, it's more of a crisp white and later on in the evening, it's more of a yellower tone. And you can just schedule yours from the sunset to the sunrise option instead of off. And now for customizing our menu bar, which is the top bar over here. We can go to control center in the system settings and we can decide what modules that we want visible there. So the only ones that I keep there all the time are my Wi-Fi and my Bluetooth and other things like my focus, my display and my sound and my now playing will only be visible when they're active. At this point, I also like to show my battery in the menu bar. I don't know why that's not a standard setting. So you can see what exact percentage your MacBook is at. And I also have this app that hides a bunch of my other apps on the menu bar. But once again, we'll get into that in the app section of the video. So I really did a deep clean of my MacBook and even something as menial as the menu bar, I like to keep as clean as I can. So my customizations don't end there. I also customize my finder, which holds my downloads and my documents to once again, only keep what I really need. So to customize the finder toolbar up here, you can go ahead to finder and under view, go to customize toolbar. So down here in the bottom is your default set and it has view, group, share, edit tags, and action and a search bar. And you can customize it by taking any of these items and just dragging them straight into any of the spaces in the toolbar. So the ones that I decided to keep are view so you could take a look at your downloads or folders as icons or lists or as a column or gallery. I always keep it as list because I feel like it's the most intuitive. It has all the information that I need clearly listed out. I also have airdrop and delete and this action button as well as the share and the search bar. So once again, it's all about optimizing all these little buttons and just keeping what we need. And we are not done with the customizations. We are also customizing the sidebar and we can go to finder, settings, and here under the sidebar tab, you can click what you want to see. And the ones that were really only relevant to me were recents, downloads, applications, documents, and desktops. So I unchecked everything else because I don't really use them. So obviously this will be very customized to you, but once again, I only wanna see what I use. 
And finally, if you're anything like me, sometimes you have documents within other documents, within folders, within other folders, and it can be hard to keep track of where everything is. So what you can do for this is go to view and click show path bar and show status bar. Mine says hide because I have it clicked already. So the path bar will tell you what folders your files are in, so you know the pathway of where everything is, and the status bar will tell you how many files are in this folder as well as how much storage is available. Next on, moving on to accessibility, there are also a few changes that I make in my Mac to make it a little bit more accessible. So we're going to go back to our system settings. So to turn on this function where you can use three fingers to drag a window instead of having to click and drag it, we can go to accessibility under system settings and go to pointer control under motor. And under trackpad options over here, we can change the dragging style to three finger drag. And now we can move things around like this. Also, if you have an Apple Watch, you can set it up such that if you're wearing your watch while you're unlocking your MacBook, your watch can automatically unlock it for you. So to do that, go to Touch ID and Password and scroll down to the bottom until you see your Apple Watch and just turn that feature on. So it's very easy now when you're unlocking your MacBook to let your watch do the work for you. And so those were all of the changes that I made in my settings to not only clean up my Mac, but also make it more functional and suitable to my needs. And now we're going to my favorite part, which is all of the new apps that I have downloaded. So starting things off with Notion and Notion Calendar, these are pretty much a given, but I have both of them downloaded on my desktop. I never use the browser version and I both use Notion and my Notion Calendar so much that it's just permanently on my dock down here. I have made videos for both of these apps, so if you haven't seen them yet, I'll have them somewhere here on the screen. Okay, so let me get more in depth about some of the apps that I featured earlier. This right here is from Neptunes, and it's this little desktop accessory that allows you to control your music from Spotify. And since there is no Spotify widget, I kind of use this as a substitute. The great thing is that you can move it around anywhere, so I kind of hide it so it looks like one of the other widgets. Here I can pause, replay, shuffle my songs, and I know that you can do that through the app and through the keyboard, but I honestly just like the look of having it here amongst my other widgets, so perhaps this is a more aesthetic than functional one, but still love it nonetheless. I also showed you Hidden Bar, which is this app that allows you to hide items in your menu bar to give your Mac an overall cleaner look. Even though you can customize your menu bar to only keep what you need, there are certain apps that permanently have icons in your menu bar that you're not able to get rid of because they're running in the background. And when you have so many of them, it just looks really cluttered and disorganized. And to do this, all you have to do is click the arrow, hold the command, key and drag whatever you want to hide to the left of this arrow and you can just hide it like that so everything looks a little bit cleaner. Okay, so now we're going to be talking about Raycast, which is one of the apps that I'm most excited about. So it's basically like Apple Spotlight, but on crack, and it's really hard to describe exactly what it is. But overall, it's a productivity software slash application launcher, and it's a way to perform different functions on your MacBook in one centralized location and do so in a very efficient manner. There is so much that you can do with it, but to best explain what it is, let me just show you some of my most used features. And to activate it, you use command space to open spotlight, but you would do option space to open up Raycast, and it looks like this. You can open up an application, you can search files. You can do some quick maths. You can convert currency. You can search emojis. You can quickly search Google. You can open up these things called floating notes, which is basically just a little note that you have in the corner of your screen. I've used this for quick reminders to myself or if I'm in a meeting and I wanna remind myself of something, I just throw it in here. deadline was pushed to Tuesday. And the great thing is that no matter where you move, so let's say I open up a different app, this is going to be here just as the reminder. And if you exit and go back to it, it will still be there waiting for you. You could use it to change the window layout of whatever window that you're on. So I can move this to the right half, for example, or I can move it to bottom two thirds and get really specific. <laughs> you can use it to open your camera 
hey <laughs> and i find this especially helpful when i'm about to enter a zoom meeting and i quickly want to see what i look like and what i will present myself as in the meeting before i actually join the meeting and the great thing here is that if you press enter you can also take a picture without having to open up photo booth it automatically copies it and you can paste it and which i like to send my sister photos <laughs> And then finally, one of my favorite features is the Pomodoro timer, which is built in here. And then you can control it and you can adjust it here. And then it just starts and can be seen in your menu bar up over here. So I like to use that when I'm studying. There is so much more that you're able to do with Raycast that it's actually preposterous. I've only had this for about a week now and I feel like my productivity has boosted like 300% from using this. So I'm so excited to keep using it, optimizing it, and figuring out ways to incorporate it into my workflow. Next up is a seemingly very small app, but I can't describe how helpful it has been. So Yoink is a kind of shelf or a filing cabinet for documents or photos or anything that you copy or download onto your computer. So let's say we have something like my selfie over here and it follows you around until you reach your destination and come to the point where you want to put it. So I would, for example, move it onto my Notion like this. And I know that this seems like a really small thing, but especially when I'm working on larger research projects or especially when I'm editing videos and I have a lot of media that I'm transferring from one place to another, it's so much better to have it inside this little cabinet instead of having it stored in my downloads or in my desktop and me taking ages to find anything. And the downside is that it was $12 Canadian for this and maybe there are other alternatives, but I honestly use this every single day. And so I really recommend it, especially if you work on big projects where you have to move a lot of media back and forth. And the final app that I'm going to be featuring is my new browser, which is called Arc. Now, I've heard about this before and a couple of people have suggested that I try it, but I was such a Google Chrome girl that I was hesitant to use anything else. But now after a little bit over a week of using Arc, I really do think that it's here to stay. It has a very sleek interface, which I like a lot. You can have different spaces, which are these icons here at the bottom. And so you can see that I have a personal one and a school one and you could just slide left and right to access them. Here I have a bunch of my favorite tabs that I frequently use. So for my personal one, like Google, Facebook, Messenger, my YouTube and my YouTube stats as well as some of my pinned tabs as well. And if we scroll here to the right, these are all of my school files. So I like how things are compartmentalized based on what I'm using my browser for. You can easily open and switch between tabs with Command T. It's easy to create split screens by dragging one tab to another. And once you learn hotkeys, it's super easy to, for example, navigate between tabs, hide this browser here on the left and so on. Overall, I really do like Arc, even if it's just for the aesthetics, but also its increased functionality just makes browsing the web that much funner and that much easier. So that's pretty much it, with a little bit of settings tweaking, some new customizations, and some fun new apps, I was able to transform my MacBook from this cluttered, disorganized mess into something that is functional, optimized, and perfect for me and my needs. If I'm missing any cool apps or some very helpful features, make sure to share it with the rest of us in the comments down below. And you know, in the spirit of back to school and out of my own pure curiosity, please let me know when you're starting school also down in the comments below because I know it's different in every country and I'm very curious to see what it's like for you. And mine is in the end of August. And that's it for the MacBook and that concludes my What's On My series. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.